As the movie about object nodes illustrates, UML activity diagrams can show objects that are created, used, or modified by the actions that occur during a process. These objects can be data objects or physical objects, such as a physical invoice that starts the remit payment process. You can show objects using object nodes, or you can show them using pins. Pins offer a shorthand way of showing that an object of some kind is input into an action or output from an action. If you're decomposing an action, pins correspond to the parameter boxes in your subactivity diagram. See the movie on subactivity diagrams for more information about that. As you can see here, the input pin indicates that the object is input into the action to which the pin is attached. In the same way, the output pin shows that the object is output from the action that it's attached to. And you can tell which pin is output and which pin is input by the direction of the flow that connects them. If it's pointing away from the pin, the pin is output. If it's pointing toward the pin, that pin is input. So using our order fulfillment example, we can show how this works. We have the action fill order. That action has output of a shipping order. That shipping order is received as input by the ship order action. So we'll label the pin to show that that's the input that's being received. So you see this is a very clear example of the kind of output that's created by one action and how that is received as input by another action. Another simple example might be an electronic scoreboard. The electronic scoreboard will do two things. Calculate the score, and that would be followed by the action of displaying the score. And it does that in the form of a number. So what inputs and outputs do we need for this activity to take place? Well, the calculate score needs an input pin. It's going to receive a number of some kind. Uh, say in a football game, if, if there's a touchdown, it will receive the number of six. It will use that number to perform its action of calculating the score, and it will output another number which would be the new score. Now the next step, the next action in the process, will receive that number as input, so we'll give it an input pin, and that receives as input what calculate score put out as output. and we'll connect that with an object flow. So it's the same idea. Calculate score receives a number as input. It does its thing, calculates the score, and it outputs a new number which represents the new score. That's received as input by the display score action. And then that would take us to the end of this particular process. Now notice that connected outputs and inputs tend to match. We have shipping order as output, shipping order as input. We have an, a new score number as output, new score number as input. If they don't match, for example, if an action requires only part of another action's output for its own input, you show this with a transformation. And here's an example. We have a payroll processing uh, process going on here. We have the action of receiving time card. The output of that action is a number of hours. For the calculate overtime action, it requires only part of this output. It needs to know the hours over 40 in order to calculate overtime. So we show this with a transformation, and a transformation is attached as a note to the flow between between the actions. We have it labeled as a transformation, and you can see the transformation here. This output is transformed into this 
input hours transformed into overtime hours. Pins are optional in activity diagrams. Use them when you want to show the data required and created by the actions that make up an activity or when modeling business processes to show the resources created and needed by the different steps in the process.